company is one of the United States' largest providers of post-acute health care service, which offering both home and facility-based services through its network of inpatient medical rehabilitation hospitals, home health agencies, and hospice agencies. Not only that, it also provided the outpatient surgery services in the United States. This company was founded in 1984 by its founder, Richard Scrooge, who was also the CEO of the company. Earnings at Health South were overstated by Ambiware from $3.8 billion to $4.6 billion over several years. This false information drove inflated market values for the firm, which attracted more capital investment. That capital flowed in from individual investors as well as institutional money. The stage is set in the 1990s where there was a convergence in the United States of several forces creating a rapid economic growth and wealth at a pace never seen before. At that time also, there were exploding technological advances and ample supplies of capital which mean a lot of investors invest in the company. In this era, we can see the loosening of regulations which created the perfect storm that allowed for lax oversight of financial reporting. As could have been predicted, that loose oversight gave room for fraudulent transactions and reporting. The investors at that time were primarily concerned with the revenue of a company as compared to the profitability. If revenue was growing, investors seemed satisfied to provide the capital needed to fuel that growth. Investors also demanded on pro forma financial statement, which means the company had to forecast the financial statement one or two years in future. This report presented financial information as if certain factors would have happened rather than on actual results. The focus on sales volume and good economic news created a compelling incentive for companies to adopt aggressive accounting policies as it related to the recognition of income. From that point, several companies took the leap to inflate and then fabricating the revenue numbers including HealthSouth's company. HealthSouth was caught in the act of accounting fraud. The senior staff believed that their profit would not be met by only selling the large number of their own shares. Richard Scrooge, the founder of HealthSouth Corporation, requires to make a false account in order to meet the shareholders' expectation. This figure shows the differences between the actual number and also the reported number. We can see that the total reported income was mentioned about $1.3 billion, while the total actual income was actually negative $1.8 billion. What a huge difference in numbers. An honest bookkeeper in the health health company, Michael Rines tried to warn several members of management about how the asset management division was recording transactions. He was one of the three employees that overseeing the purchase of equipment. He came to believe that the assets were being fraudulently overstated on the company's balance sheet. He told his supervisor, Kathy Edwards, that he would not make such entries unless she first initialed them. She signed off on the entries and Vines posted them. Mr. Vines justified his participation in the fraud by forcing someone else to take the responsibility for his actions. He also reports that Edwards falsified invoices to support some of the entries in response to an inquiry by the auditors. Mr. Vines resigned from his position at the HealthSouth company and found another job. After resigning, he sent an email to the auditors informing them on the fraudulent entries. He identified three specific accounts that they should look at. The auditors then called the CFO of Health South, who accused Vines and labeled him as a disgruntled employee. Based on that response, 
and satisfied with the responses to the other inquiries which all means the lies that they made, the auditors closed the file on the audit. Hmm, how interesting it was when the health sorts company able to make this happen and not be caught by the auditors. In an interview with the former CFO of HealthSouth, Rustin Smith, he described four key components in the accounting that allowed HealthSouth to commit fraud in their accounting. The first one, the aggressive accounting approach as described by Smith in the areas of financial statement, where judgment and rationalization could be tied. Smith described further in the early years where the company started to commit fraudulent activities and then it became the culture and further escalated in the company. The second point is on the acquisition and mergers with other companies and the capitalization of startup costs. Smith described it as buying earnings for the future. The third one, the multi-million dollar acquisition and mergers with fraudulent accounting in which allows the health salt company to increase their money earning by combining with others' company earnings. And lastly, the demands from the CEO and also the Wall Street at that point of time forcing them to falsify entries worth millions of dollars. The company even created a group of individuals in the accounting department to handle these fraud activities so that fewer numbers of staff can see the real numbers and make adjustment. How is this company corporate fraud accomplished and who does it? Behind every fraud is a person or even a group of people. Here listed the main persons involved in the health salt company fraud which include the CEO, Richard Scushi, and the CFOs as listed. The Chief Executive Officer, Richard Scushi, as has already been documented, was the ringleader. Everyone below him either plead guilty or was convicted and testified against him. The result is that he was convicted and sentenced to 82 months in federal prison, 3 years probation, and about 2.9 billion to be paid. He was also ordered to perform 500 hours of community service. An appeal bond was denied, and Scushi was taken into immediate custody following sentencing. He is currently in the satellite camp of the U.S. Penitentiary in Beaumont, Texas. Meanwhile, below here showing the penalties given to the five CFOs of health sorts respectively. Who were impacted by this fraud? Firstly, the investors. They lost their money that they invested in the company. Once the market value was exposed as inflated by the fraud, thousands of investors lost their money as the price of the stock collapsed. The share price markedly reduced from $3.91 to as low as $0.35 cent per share. Second one, since health salts need to close various stores which lay off many workers, it affects thousands of health salts employees who lost their jobs. Not only that, this fraud also jeopardized the patient's health in which their health care was disrupted. In conclusion, there are a few ethical moral values that could be drawn from the story of health salt scandal. There are a few factors accounted in this fraud that are so obvious for us to see. When Bim was asked what went wrong, he admitted that he and Squishy were greedy. He said, It was so much fun being rich, buying those ties and flying all over the world in our private jets. Other than that, we can see that there were no morals on their behaviors in which resulted on so many bad outcomes, especially for the investors, employees and also the patient who seek their services. There was lack of regard for humanity in those involved. The lives of those who committed the fraud has largely been destroyed, but none of this is comfort to the thousands of employees and investors of health sorts company who lost significant portions of their life savings due to the thief and deceit of relatively few people.
there was also a weak regulatory environment and poor oversight at that point of the time, which is so obvious that one wonders how all the lies could have been missed. Finally, one would hope that a lesson from health soap scandal and all other corporate white-collar crime cases from the late 1990s until now is that fraud will be caught and it will be punished accordingly.